Welcome to another tutorial from Mr. Harpence's math class. Uh, today we're going to be talking about expanding and contracting logarithms. Okay, so before we get into uh, a couple of sample tasks, uh, I'm just going to refresh uh, your memory on the properties of logarithms. Uh, we've got three that we're going to use primarily. Uh, the first one we're going to use is called the product rule. All right, so the product rule states that if we have the logarithm of a product, so let's say the log of x times y, to keep this in general terms, um, we can expand that to be the sum of the logs of the factors. So what that looks like is this can turn into log of x plus log of y. Now, the basis doesn't matter. Uh, we can we can use any base as long as the bases are the same. Okay, so uh, I wrote that out just uh, initially as the uh, common log, and uh, we can also write that as the natural log. We can write that as log base three. It doesn't matter as long as uh, the bases of the logs are the same. Okay, so uh, that's the first rule. The next rule is the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says if we have the log of a division problem, uh, let's say log of m divided by log of n, we can expand that. And this time the divisor, uh, we end up subtracting the log of the divisor from the log of the quotient. So it's related to the product rule. The product turns into a sum and division turns into subtraction. And these are also closely related to uh, our exponent rules. So what this looks like is log base m minus log of n. Okay, so those are the first two rules we'll use. And the last rule we use is called the power rule. And this rule we end up using a lot when we're solving. Uh, log and, e and exponential functions, or at least we can. It's a uh, one strategy to solve log and exponential pro uh, equations. Um, what the power rule states is if there's an exponent inside of a log, uh, that turns into a factor. So we end up multiplying the log uh, by that exponent and the exponent uh, is no longer an exponent. And this is how we're actually able to solve exponential equations is by kind of exploiting this power rule. So what that looks like is uh, if I have the log of, let's say, b to the x, well, that x comes down and turns into a factor, and we are left with a uh, log of b. Okay, so if I look at it this way, it's kind of like taking this x value and bringing it out front. Okay, so these are the three u rules we're going to exploit when uh, we're expanding logs and we're consolidating logs. Um, when uh, I consolidate logs, so I try to write several terms as one log term, uh, I end up going, I, I, execute, uh, I, I look at the power rule first and then I try to bring anything that I'm subtracting goes into the denominator, anything that we are adding, those turn into factors uh, in our final uh, in our final problem. When I'm expanding logs, I tend to go the other way the other way around. So I break up my factors as a sum. Uh, I subtract my divisors. Uh, and then at the end, I, I uh, exploit this power rule. So uh, without further ado, let's actually get to an example and kind of show the mechanics of, uh, let's first talk about expanding logarithms, okay? So uh, let's expand the following. All right, so what I have is log base five of, 3x squared divided by 4. 
So now I want to write this as multiple logs. As of now, this is kind of a performance task, but this can actually be helpful, um, especially if we have like powers of the same base. So if we had say log base two and I happen to have a 16 and a 32 as either factors or divisors, um, that allows me to just evaluate those numerically without a calculator, so it can be kind of helpful. Um, but as of now, this is just kind of a performance task. Like, can you apply the properties of logarithms to rewrite, whether it's convenient or not? So in this case, uh, once again, if I'm expanding, I'm going to start with the power rule and the quotient rule, and I'm going to end with, or sorry, the product rule, the quotient rule, and uh, I'm going to end with the power rule. Uh, if I was consolidating, I kind of go the other way around. So uh, up here in the numerator of this argument, I've got a product. Okay, I have three times x squared, and here, I have a divisor of four. So I find the sum of the logs of the products and I subtract the divisors. So let's first start out with that. If I expand this out, uh, I would have, uh, I, and I can even do this in a couple of steps. I can just apply uh, the, the quotient rule first if I wanted to and go log uh, base five of three x squared minus the log base five of four. Again, notice how my bases are the same. Okay, so now in this uh, first term here, I have a product, so I can break that apart and turn it into a sum. So this turns into log base five of three plus log base five of x squared minus log base five of four. Now, the last thing we got to take care of is our exponent or our power in that second term. Now, remember that comes down and turns into a factor. So, if I apply these rules, my final answer would be log base five of three plus two log base five of x. Notice there's no power exponent inside that uh, logarithm anymore. And now we have minus log base five of four. Now, again, kind of uh, returning to the utility of this uh, concept is these two values are just, just numbers um, and we can manipulate them like numbers. We can subtract them on both sides of an equation. Uh, we'll add, subtract the first term and add the last term uh, if we're trying to uh, simplify an equation to get x all by itself. So sometimes this can be uh, really useful when we're solving equations. Okay, uh, now let's do something a little bit different. And uh, I'm actually going to up the level and uh, talk about uh, some of our log identities as well when we consolidate a log expression. So we're going to start with something that's kind of big and we're going to bring it all together into one single log term. Okay, so, well, let's uh, grab my pen again. So consolidate or condense. All right, so I'm still gonna be using the exact same rules. Okay, I'm gonna apply the power rule, but I'm gonna apply the power rule backwards. I'm gonna apply the quotient rule, but I'm gonna apply the quotient rule backwards. And I'm gonna apply the product rule, but once again, that is gonna be backwards. So, uh, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit interesting as well, um, just because uh, I, I think that uh, that's fun, that's fun. So, uh, I'm gonna have, let's say, um, uh, start out fairly simple and let's say, uh, three log of uh, x plus log of y, and let's just do uh, minus three, and let's let's make this all log base three. Okay, um, we can apply the power rule, and the power rule is just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this three. We're going to bring it inside the log and that's going to become x cubed. So our first term turns into log 3 
of x cubed. Okay, not too bad. Uh, this is still log base three of y at this point. And this is still uh, minus three. So now on these first two terms, uh, they are currently a sum. So if I wanted to condense those into a single log, I turn those into a product. And so I can have log base three of x cubed y all in one log. And now we've got this minus three over here. Uh, and this requires a little bit of creativity. So we need to figure out how to write three as a base three log. Uh, now, how I like to approach these is I like to always think of, you know, the log is the exponent. We raise the base two to get the argument. So the answer to a log is an exponent. So what I need is uh, a log base three problem that I raise uh, to an exponent. Or there's another way I can think about this. And I, I can think about this actually applying the product rule in a sense. And so uh, another way to think about this is thinking about what is the identity log. So the identity log for log base three is log base three of three. So in other words, log base three of three is, is one. You raise the base three to the power of one to get the argument three. And uh, this requires, I think, just a little bit less processing power. You don't have to think about it as much, so as long as you remember that identity really well. So I can rewrite this uh, minus three. I'll, I'll keep this first term, log base three of x cubed y. I'm gonna change colors here. And I'm gonna go minus three times log base three of three. Now this part, log base three of three, this is just identity. Log base three of three just equals one, so three times one is three. So we, we haven't changed the value of this expression at all. I've, I've basically just multiplied that last term by one, and I'm just choosing kind of an elegant and sophisticated way of writing one. Now why this is useful is because I can take this three and now I can apply the power rule and I can write that as an exponent. So again, I'm gonna rewrite my first term here, uh, log base three of x cubed y minus, now this turns into log base three of three cubed. So now at this point, uh, because I didn't have to, um, I didn't have to think about my exponents really. Now the exponents are just sitting there and I, I just have to evaluate. So three to the third power is 27. And now finally, I can just apply the quotient rule because I have the difference of two logs. So uh, the, if, I, if I have the difference of two logs, the thing that I'm subtracting becomes the divisor as I condense these logs. And so finally, this is log base three of x cubed y divided by 27. And we went from this first term up here all the way down to here. Okay. Now that is kind of a higher level problem, putting a constant uh, in, an, in a log expression and having that part of the consolidation, um, but still a fun problem. It's an interesting problem. You guys are totally capable of doing it. Hope this helps. Uh, if you guys have any uh, requests for other tutorials or anything like that, uh, feel free to let me know. Hope all's well and uh, happy mathing.